Hello, everybody in live stream land. I'm Karen Holtzblatt, and thank you for joining me for the first in a series of live streams talking about issues related to retaining women in tech. Today, we are going to talk about the Valuing and Jerk Project, a piece of research that we've been working on for the last year or so, and some of our findings and ideas. Before we get started talking about which behaviors we want to do more of and which behaviors we maybe want to modulate a little bit, let me give you a few instructions. On our live stream page, if you haven't already downloaded, we're going to do a scorecard later in the talk or take a piece of paper and jot down the things so you can score your organization and yourself. You'll also see on that page a chat button if you want to comment on anything, ask a question. Um, my producer, Derek, is in the background and he'll be taking a look at all of those things. So I look forward to hearing from you and I will ask you to talk to me. So let's get started. Let's begin with a little bit of a um, background on the women in tech problem. As you may or you may not know or have heard me talk about before, since the 80s or the 70s really, women have, you know, one of the goal of the women's movement is to participate in the workforce in every kind of job and that includes technology. Now over the years in doctors, lawyers, business, eye bankers, all of what we call the hero professions, including engineering, we have had increasing number of, of women participate. The effort to bring women into our organization, which we call the pipeline problem, has been enormous. The amount of money that is spent has been enormous. And so we spend a lot of time trying to get women interested in technology and STEM and bring them in the door. But the sad news is that unlike the other hero professions, women in our field leave the field or leave a company two times more often than do men. So, you know, if you imagine a bucket, we're trying to fill our bucket, but women are falling out the hole in the bottom of the bucket. We can't solve our problems if the only thing we do is talk about pipeline. We have to seal up their hole. And that is why about eight years ago, I started the Women in Tech Retention Project and in 2018 housed it in my nonprofit, WITOPS. If you have a comment, please go to the live stream page and uh, join the chat. I will be asking you for different things. And later we will be doing your scorecard on how you're doing on valuing and jerk issues. You can download that or you'll just jot on a piece of paper to yourself. So let's start by understanding, well, why did we do this project? In our re research on women in tech and retention, we kept having findings like 49% of women feel invisible and they feel that they're not heard. And we have a score of where people say, are they thinking of leaving their organization? On measures of the team experience, interacting with people, if they are low on those measures, they are high on thinking of leaving. So we already know that there's something going on inside of the organization. If we take a look at the literature, even today, even though we started all this stuff back in the 70s, women report negative interactions at work. The sad news is that 50% of women in STEM, as opposed to non-STEM or men in STEM, are continuing to experience discrimination, stereotyping, things like that. We know from the overall uh, literature that any male-dominated workplace is associated with additional harassment and hostility towards women. That makes women have more stress. The additional stress makes them want to leave. So, you know, this is where we're at. Our unconscious bias, if you would, or our propensity to act in ways that make people feel like they don't belong is happening in our industry and it is affecting whether or not women stay. Now, women today, I mean, these are current statistics, are still judged to be less competent than men, and that is true even when women are judging the women. So, you know, we have to be able to come at this problem some other way. 
Because if bias is unconscious, we're now asking everybody to get into their unconscious and do something. And the additional sad news is that even in departments that put everybody through diversity training, women continue to feel that they don't belong and some sense of discrimination. So we have to do something else. Because culture has been indicated as the problem, my problem is that we run around and we go, well, it's a bro culture. Oh, we don't want to be with those guys. Oh, he did that or you did that to me. Or that's stereotyping or that's harassment, whatever the words are, or I feel invisible. But we don't really know operationally, or at least I didn't, what exact behaviors are we talking about? And this is the origin of the Valuing and Jerk Project. What if, what if we could say, these are the behaviors that are valuing, everyone wants these behaviors? Well, then we would know what to work on. What if we could say, look, these behaviors, these are the giant push away. These behaviors are just, no, we have to get rid of these behaviors. We're going to call those jerk behaviors. What if we knew what we were actually talking about? Maybe we could work on it explicitly. So this is why we started this project. Of course, we did deep dial field research. This is the findings I'm going to talk to you about today. And we asked people across ages and job titles in the last three weeks. We wanted it to be grounded. I want to know all the instances of valuing behavior, what you experience as valuing, but tell me the whole story if it happened to you, if you witnessed it, or if you did it. So you'll see that those are our three things we're looking for. And then we looked at, all right, if you were going to say that's jerk behavior, in the last three weeks, I want you to tell me those stories. So it's very grounded. Then we took all those instances, built them into an affinity, looking for the behaviors, and I'm going to talk to you today about those findings. Now, where my team is right at the moment is that they are doing solution generation, and the notion of a scorecard or a checklist is part of that. We will also be doing a survey to get a larger population. And you, of course, can help because everything at WitOps is volunteer driven. So let's get into it and let's talk about the valuing and jerk behaviors. Are you ready? I'm going to do an overview of them all, and then we're going to do the scorecard. When we think about value, we really think, and we think about how we interpret behavior, there's three primary areas that seem to matter. How is my skill or my job role being perceived? Do I feel like I'm in relationship to others, that I matter? And I come in with an idea of what expected professional and socially appropriate behavior is. Are people living that way or are they violating that? So let's talk about each of these in turn. First, now I have to tell you, when I saw this data, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a huge eye opener to me because at some level it's so easy. It's so easy. Why don't we just do a lot of this stuff? People really want someone to just say, thank you. People want people to say, good job. People want to say, I liked your idea. People like it when they get a tangible reward, especially if it's presented in front of everybody else publicly. And of course, people like a promotion. In other words, people like and want recognition. It's not that hard to do, and yet it seems to be missing. What else? Use my work. If you just use my work, I feel valued. Use my ideas. Use my skill. Use my role. Ask me to do stuff. Then I feel valued. And if I help you, appreciate it. If I help the team, if I help the company, appreciate it. And by the way, if I'm managing, well, tell me my team did good. At some level, valuing is so simple. We just have to kind of remember to do it. Well, okay, so what is jerk behavior then? Well, jerk behavior demeans me or my skill. Never giving me a challenge is a message 
And often women talk about this. They're not given. They work hard. They're not given a challenge. It says, I don't trust you. Or as one young person who was a new hire said, my manager did trust me. He gave me this challenge. Ignoring my work. Or worse, as one academic PhD student said, redoing my work. The professor, this was a woman professor, read her paper, rewrote it, changed the authors. So she was first. And now, boom, denied the work in the experience of the student that she had put in. Or how about this? Deciding your way is the only way. Walking into a meeting, one story said, and saying, this is how we're going to do it. People will say, but that's not standard practice, or here's the, the data from the customer. We don't think that's good. And they're like, too bad. I'm not listening to you. That kind of pushing away everything else. That, denying the input of others, that's jerk behavior. What else? Role violation. We call it role violation. All of us have a job type, whether we're a developer, a manager, a project lead, a user experience professional, designer, coder, quality person, whatever you are. Your job comes with a set of expected responsibilities and therefore things you should be involved in and things you shouldn't be involved in. Saying, as a project manager did, her boss said to her, we don't need your kind of work. Well, that kind of steps all over your value. Or how about you did all the user research and no one invites you to the ideation and design meetings, thinking you have nothing to offer, because what? You don't draw a UI? In one form or another, are we communicating value of the job type? Or another person said, well, you know, this other person used to have this job, but I got hired, but they're not sent putting me on the emails. They're not asking me to make the decisions. They're still asking that other person. So she had to go talk to her and go, look, it, these are my roles. These are your roles. Role violation can really be upsetting. And we have to figure out how to go, hey, this is what I'm responsible for. These things, when someone steps on your job, we think of as jerk behavior. So we have to keep in mind, it's so easy to be valuing. We should just try to do it and try to avoid demeaning behavior. Now, one of the questions that people always want to say, well, is jerk behavior devaluing? And I don't think so. I think that active appreciation, like we've been talking about, means I'm valued. But if you do none of those things, if you're effectively ignored, that automatically communicates devalue. Whereas active devalue, taking a stand that you're not good enough, that's the jerk behavior. Okay, ready for the next one? Making a relationship communicates value. If you do things for and with me, you implicitly communicate I'm worth it. People talked about how their manager or their, the senior uh, developer invested time in them. They mentored them. They listened. They listened when they had problems. And they spent the time to get to know who they were and what they liked. Getting to know me personally makes me present. It makes me real. And that means I matter. At, in the workplace, being up to date on the work, helping me when I'm stuck, knowing my work means you know me. But like that PhD student, taking over the work or giving too much unsolicited advice versus coaching and helping me get better, no, that is not what we're talking about. And also, relationship means advocating for me. It means standing for my ideas. As one professional stood for the ideas of someone who was not there. Advocating for more challenges for me if you're a manager or the project lead or the senior developer. Advocating for me in promotions or helping me with my personal issues if it happens to be homework or any other situation. In other words, 
Am I in a relationship to you, if you're my manager, to the team, or to the people that I am working with? If I am, I'm valued. If I'm not, I feel invisible because I'm looking to see. Jerk behavior denies the relationship. Ignoring me, lack of eye contact, ignoring my email, ignoring my request, and just not knowing what I'm doing like I wasn't there. Or impatience. As one project manager said, I'm telling you about the work I did on your request, and I can hear you, this was a remote meeting, at the other end, clicking around and feeling like, you know, why are we doing this? Do we have to? Do we have to? Even though he was time compressed, he was dealing with his time compression by making her and her work irrelevant. Or another story, acting like we're not working together. This was in an academic situation where two situations, one person, they were supposed to be in a class working as a team. One person went off and did his own thing, denying that he was working with anyone else. In another situation, one person was struggling on the team, whatever. Nobody else on the team went over to help him out. In other words, acting like we aren't a team, like why are you here? Or the new hire who comes and asks a question or one too many questions and you just want to swat them like they're a fly. Why are you here? We're not in a relationship. So jerk behavior denies the relationship when I'm looking to find out if I, the person, am valid. So relationships actually take time and work. And I wanted to raise this issue. You know we're not always perfect. If you have a bad day, like that one manager, you can apologize, you can back off, you can communicate in one form or another that your behavior wasn't okay. All right, let's do another. This is a harder one. So if we think about interpersonal dynamics, there's me and the other, whether that's a team of one or two, you know. When I'm looking at your behavior, I'm evaluating or reacting to it through my personal filter. We all come in with expectations. We come in with expectations from the cultures that we were brought up in the big geographic cultures, from the family cultures that we were brought up with, from the professional cultures we participated in the past, from each industry, whether it's like academia, research, or product development in our world, has its own sort of little cultural or work ethics. And when we look at other people's behaviors, we're operating off of those expectations. When someone violates those expectations, we think they're jerks. Now, it makes it a little harder because maybe not everybody is on the same page. So let's look. Can we understand it? Top of the list is that professionals communicate. Leaders communicate their expectations. They go, this is what I'm looking for. These are the goals. I expect you to do it like this. It's explicit and it is simple and they make sure it's understood. Valuing is implicit. If you do that, you're operating towards my success. Not doing it, as we're going to see in a minute, means you're a jerk. Workers, whoever you are, communicate your status. You don't just not show up. You don't just do late work. If something's going on and you're having a problem, you communicate with others. And there's basic social values, like don't talk a foreign language in the room with people who don't understand. Make sure everyone can talk. And that includes techie language, because not everybody in the larger product team can understand everything. We have to be thinking, are we communicating? If we aren't communicating, implicitly it's going to be interpreted as either self-centered or, you know, just like jerky. I don't know how else to say it. Time came up. Time and time again in the affinity diagram, we had a whole wall of time. It's kind of like easy. Don't waste my time. Don't be late. 
let us know. Don't waste time by talking too much. Don't waste time by not knowing what the meeting is about. Make sure you think about airtime. I like to talk to people about airtime. Like, let's say there's 10 people in a room. We've got an hour. That means everybody gets what? Six minutes, maybe five, right? How much time are you taking? Are we valuing equal airtime? And this is very simple. Don't break the rules, not explicit. The explicit ones, the implicit ones, don't think the world exists not for you. And be fair. Treat all the workers, full-time, part-time, or contractors the same. Time and time again, we hear stories where, you know, the full-time people get this, the contractors are pushed to the sun. The part-time people aren't treated equal. They don't have the same rights. So what we're saying here is we come in with our expectations and we interpret the world through them. So let's look at what happens when we violate those norms. And this one, just like the thank you note, is kind of a, I don't know, when you look at it, it's a no brainer. I can't even tell you how many times this one came up. Don't yell, don't yell. Do not raise your voice, do not yell. And really don't yell in public. Don't act in anger. Don't walk out of the room in a huff. Don't be resentful just because you got told no. No happens in an organization. And yes, don't try to get your way by threatening verbally. Or as one story we had where a man basically moved his whole body forward in anger into a woman's space. So, you know, if you yell, and I don't mean this great articulation I'm doing for you here. If you yell, you're a jerk. Get over it. Don't exclude people. Not today. We're done with this. No one expects people to be excluded implicitly or explicitly based on gender, race. What came up a lot was experience level where young people feel that they're not treated with the same kind of respect because they don't have as much experience because maybe they can't be taken seriously. And we see in every one of these situations that people are then, as one person uh, told us who was a person of color, I sit in the meeting and I'm monitoring my own behavior. And this was a woman, so she's got two things going on there making sure I don't feed into the stereotype. Well, as soon as you're monitoring your behavior, you clearly already don't feel valued or accepted. And how can you listen in the meeting if you're busy worrying about your own behavior? Don't act like the rules aren't for you. Vacation time has its rules, follow them. Performance is evaluated, follow them. One story we heard about a student who decided, even though the syllabus was there, that the deadlines didn't matter for 30% of his course. And so he got all mad and actually brought action because he didn't follow the rules. Use the resources appropriately. We're not talking about the idea of disrupted process design. We're talking about the basic rules that let people get things done. So we expect people to follow the rules and not to go around them, not to try to go around them, not to jump the project manager and go to the manager to say he was wrong, not to jump the project manager and go to the developers and say the project manager was wrong. As one woman found out, guess what? That project manager made sure she got no promotions. There are implicit rules of professional behavior. We are expecting people to do them. Otherwise, you'll look like a jerk. And don't watch your power. Everybody has power. There's explicit power. You have power by being a manager or senior VP, director. You have power by being a senior developer or somebody who knows more. Some people have power because of their overall influence. When 
We use that power to dominate a meeting or a conversation. We're using our power for bad. When we remove people or harass them and they have to accept it, we're using our power for bad. But we also have stories of when people, when they found out about those situations, use their status to go to an upper level person and stop it from happening. That says that I'm bound. Treating a person professionally, even giving them hard feedback, communicates value. Everyone wants straightforward, no BS feedback on how they are doing. As long as we do it without anger and demeaning, tones, it's professional behavior. So what are we saying? We got to ask, are the people that you're working with sharing your values and expectations? If, if we don't even know that, if we don't have an explicit clarification, how are we going to get on the same page? So when we think about the areas that we want to work in, we're thinking about behaviors. And I'm going to now give you very explicit behaviors. This is the time to get out your checklist or get a piece of paper and jot it down. That have to do with role and skill, that have to do with relationship, and that have to do with following the rules. We have 15 valuing behaviors and 15 jerk behaviors. So let's see how you do. We're going to start with the valuing checklist. And what you're going to do is for each area, which I will introduce when I tell you the behaviors in each area, I want you to think about the last three weeks. You get one point for each time something happened. Now, you may see things that happened to you. You may report things that happened to you. You may report things that you witnessed. It was happening to someone else. And you may report when you did it, okay? When you're done, if you add together everything in the column and then add happened to me to I witnessed it, you'll get your organizational score. And then you'll add up your personal score. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Valuing, appreciate. Did you do or see direct, straightforward appreciation of someone's skill or their behavior? It could be words, notes, however. What about public recognition of somebody's skill? Or how about when somebody tells somebody more senior? that someone else did a good job or their team did a good job. Think about three weeks, write it down. Next one, reward. Somebody got a gift, a dollar amount, a spot bonus for somebody's skill or behavior in public or private. Someone was recognized by a promotion for their hard work and for their behavior. Did you, do you see rewards happening in your organization? Are you doing it? Three weeks, pay attention to three weeks. Otherwise you don't have a real score. Next one, using my work, very important, more subtle. Someone or the project use someone's work or an idea. Someone acknowledge someone's contribution to a project or a working meeting. Someone was given a challenge or hard work. Write it down. All right, these behaviors show you, you value my skill. Show me. Okay, we're going. Supporting or coaching. You gave me straightforward feedback, calmly with respect and a desire to help. Or you took time to listen and understand my work or my personal needs. Someone helped, guided, or partnered on a hard project, support and coaching. How are you doing? Championing, showcasing somebody's good work to senior management or a wider audience. Advocating for someone's ideas, career, or personal issues.
Here's your basic respect and consideration. You or someone showed up to meetings on time, delivered your work on time, or if not, explained and let people know. You or you saw people communicating expectations, status, or needs in a timely way so everyone could adjust. And although this is not one of the valuing behaviors, I got to give you credit for it. You did something that wasn't great, or you saw someone who did something and they apologized or they backed down. These behaviors tell me you value me. So if you're feeling devalued or invisible, is it because you're missing these valuing behaviors? And now if you could join the chat or at least tell me later, which of these valuing behaviors or which three do you think are the most important to you? I'd like to know. All right, you ready for jerk? Here we go. Again, you have a checklist. This time we're gonna do minus points. So minus one for every time it happened to you or you witnessed it, but minus three if you did it. Same rules. Here we go. Berating. Yelling at people, pointing out shortcomings in their work or personal style. Using inappropriate or foul language to refer to a colleague in public or ever. Public is always worse. How are you doing in your organization? Demeaning. Describing someone's work or ideas as substandard, not worth consideration. Dismissing them explicitly and in detail. Not taking the time to understand someone's work or idea if it's the manager or coworker, people you're really or it's supposed to. Redoing someone else's work, but not providing feedback or an opportunity to improve or a way to collaborate or coaching. Demeaning their value of their skill. Role violation. Again, we're at the notion that you have a particular job with responsibility. Somebody takes over somebody else's role, does their tasks, make their decision, goes to their meetings. Somebody answers questions or makes recommendations that belong to somebody else. They are violating someone else's or your role. Did this happen? These behaviors are denying my skill and, un and undercut self-confidence. Here's our basic inconsiderateness, operationalized. Ignoring email and requests from collaborators and direct reports. Not communicating expectations clearly, so work has to be redone. Or just wasting time, being late for the meeting or with the work and not telling anybody so they can adjust. This is your basic jerk behavior. Domination dominates somebody or you take over the airtime take over to the decisions decide all the directions so no one else can be heard or just insist on anything being their way without input from anyone else ignoring known data or standard practice or listening to someone most often who is of lower power, impatiently not considering their work or ideas. How did you do? And here's our world breaking. Breaks expectations of social or organizational appropriate behavior. Violating known standards, rules, policy, and norms of the organization, company, or your team, every team, has a team culture. It's a way of doing things. So don't forget this. It's often implicit. Or just breaks typical social or personal values that 
guide professional work. These behaviors are just rude and reflect badly on the actor. Doesn't make you look good. And they all call for an apology. All right, now add your columns, add them together. The first two, that tells you how your company's doing. Look at your own score, don't lie. You don't have to share it with anyone. If you're all in the room, I strongly suggest you hold a conversation about how you did with this or try doing it together with people in your organization. So let's think about these jerk behaviors, which undercut you the most, which make you angry. Please go to the chat and tell me which ones you think are the worst for you and which seem to be accepted in your organization as okay when we've just said these are basic jerk behaviors. So kind of not open. All right, so you've got your score sheet and you've got some things to think about and talk about. But what else could we do? What kind of change can we make? What are the things that I and my team are working on? What can you do with me? Well, the first thing you can do, let's think about it in the domain of valuing. All right. Which of these valuing behavior matters most to you? Go tell people, then they can do it. Which of these valuing behaviors are you just not doing enough of? Pick one, any one, to increase and start scoring yourself. All right, what about jerk behaviors? What jerk behavior do you do? We all do something. My favorite story is a young woman who was told in her review that she dominated meetings and talked too much. So what she did is she went around to every single person on her team and said, I was told this, please tell me exactly what I did. And asked them to help her. They were so impressed that she even cared to ask everybody. And that, they, that she asked for help, that they helped her. And she could check in with them after meetings and say, well, how did I do we can do that. What jerk behaviors do you need to work on in your team and organization? What is accepted? Start brainstorming things you can do. You can do it. You can do it right now. And as I said, we will be coming out with a survey so we get wider data. Please watch for it and volunteer to be in the test group. If you want to help me, I need about five people, different job types. But then we want to spread it wide across the world and many departments so that we can see what's going on with these behaviors. What else? Well, go share this with your team. Are you an agile team? Do you have a team manifesto? If you don't have a team manifesto, you should make a team manifesto. On the right is the one that I made with a student team. You can see that the, the, val the positive behaviors are on the left and the natural opposite of those behaviors are on the right and they all sign it, they're committed to being this kind of team. This is how we want to work and get the work done. Have a conversation about what do you think is rude or what is a valuing behavior or a jerk behavior. Do this exercise, share it with each other, then make your team manifesto. What else? All right, talk with your coworkers to work on valuing. Here's a simple one that a person I respect a lot does. At the end of every meeting, depending on what's selected for this time, the person to your left, the person to your right, or the person directly across the room, so you don't get to pick who you're talking to, turn to that person and just say one way they positively contributed. So no one can be left out. Just try it. Or... Get involved in our action research. Try some of these ideas or be involved with us or give me your ideas, type them in, send me mail. Here's one idea. This is a picture of what we call the Batman jar. We like to make things physical. There's a lot of ways that technically, you know, HR software lets you send, you know, spot rewards and little messages to people. But we think, what would you do if we put it in your face? This is my students, they invented this. And in the Batman jar, who's our silent protector, 
People can write in issues, positive issues, negative issues. At the end of each week, the team takes them out and discusses them. We are going to start with a poster behind the Batman jar or some sheet of paper that gives you ideas of things to put in it. We're messing with this idea right now. Do you want to mess with it? Or how about making valuing easy? We came up with the idea of appreciation pins or cards or coins or things you can just write on and give to people. Pass them out. Collect them. Maybe you'll get them more. I will tell you that we have brainstormed, and maybe you have other ideas, but every time we tried to think about how to say to someone, the behavior you did is jerky, we became jerks every time. So we like the idea of focusing on appreciation better. And as one young worker, actually, yeah, young, still mid-career, she said, when someone acts like a jerk, Anytime they do something that's good, I tell them. And eventually, they start to think of me as a person. And then we can break through that. I don't know if it'll work for all the jerks out there, but it might. One of my favorite projects is our character posters. We're going to make a poster of posters. Could use some visual designers to help to increase awareness with some fun. So this is our yeller. Our berater, we call him the megaphone mocker. That's the beginning of it. And we have the thank you maven for the straight up appreciator. So we have characters for all our areas. And one of the teams is developing a game, but it's not ready for prime time, but it would be fun if you want to help us, particularly if you're in the DC area. So these are the things that we'll be working on and hope to have some findings out in June uh, at, that we can start to give away to the larger organization. And please thank my students, again, reminding you that everything at WITOPS is done by worldwide volunteers, students and professionals. So join us. I hope this has been of value to you. You know, go out, learn whatever else that we are working on. Our critical intervention points are the things that we've identified to create really practical solutions that we hope teams will pick up and start doing. The first group are our key processes that we believe will radically affect the workplace, particularly for diverse teams. And that is our team onboarding, which I'll be talking about in February, and the critique process, which is coming in March. Our Dealing with interpersonal, the match between managers and team members, and the between conflict and interpersonal, uh, you know, dynamics is part of what the Jerk Project is really addressing, that bubble. Our last area are what we call sneak attacks, our career power board game, which will also be the input for one of our live streams, helps think about career, and we are working on what we call process vehicles which are existing processes that already exist that we can sneak changes into, like the Team Manifesto for Agile, and more will be coming since Agile is so worldwide. So please come learn more and come to our upcoming live stream, sign up for the, for the newsletter, sign up and volunteer, and magically we still could end at two. We have about five minutes for questions.